So if you follow my channel, if you follow New World as a game or Amazon Game Studios as an entity within the genre, within the sphere of gaming, this might be of interest to you. This is a really long video. So I apologize for that. It's really dry because we're just literally going over a written article by Jason Schreier. Um, but it's super interesting. I'm recording this after I've read the article and done the video. And it goes over the failings of Amazon Game Studios, the the principle of the company that just doesn't make sense, how they've bungled at every step, how they just literally can't release a good game. They don't listen to the experts they employ. They pay everyone ridiculous amounts of money. They pay them money that incentivizes them not to finish games. And there's literally mutinous aspects within the company that dislike their boss so badly they hate the engine that they work in they hate lumberyard and don't want to use it they think it's killing the company they hate their boss and literally call him cancer um it, it's ridiculous guys so buckle up for this one because i do believe it is a is a good read so yeah let's get into it so it's called amazon can make just about anything except a good video game so mike frizzini has had never made a video game when he helped start amazon game studios eight years later Yes, it's really been eight years, by the way, and they've released almost nothing. He has released two duds, withdrew both from stores after a torrent of negative reactions, and cancelled many more. For a company that dominates countless areas of retail, consumer electronics, and enterprise computing, the multiple failures in gaming show one realm that may be impervious to Amazon.com distinctive business philosophy. It tried to make games the Amazon way instead of simply making games people would want to play. We talk about this quite a lot about how when big money gets involved in anything that's art related they just don't understand like they think they can manufacture like soul and fun and feeling into things and you can manufacture that if you know what the fuck you're doing but if you're just like average joe i'm successful in one area of life there's not there's not that much uh interconnectivity between those two things if you just have corporate man number one who isn't a gamer probably too old to really get the culture and he's in charge of making games it doesn't matter how much money he's got it's just not fucking it's not his area of expertise it's simply that they think it's easy it isn't it, it really isn't so frazzini is an amazon lifer who came up in the books section of the website where he endeared himself to jeff bezos as a manager there conventional wisdom inside the company is that if you can run one business you can run any other Amazon's deep financial resources certainly help. As head of the games division, Frizzini has acquired established development studios and pushed the company to spend nearly $1 billion for their live video streaming website, Twitch. Frizzini recruited some of the top names in the video game in industry, including creators of the critically acclaimed franchises EverQuest and Portal, as well as executives from Electronic Arts and other big publishers. Then, according to numerous current and former employees of Frizzini's game studio, he ignored much of their advice. The hubris of being a rich, high-powered executive or manager in a company like Amazon. I mean, who would have guessed that he would have uh, a problem with listening to advice of people he sees as below him? So he frequently told staff that every Amazon game needed to be a billion-dollar franchise. Yep. And then understaff the projects, they say. Instead of using industry standard development tools, Frizzini insisted Amazon build its own, which might have saved the company money if the software ever worked properly. Another thing we've heard a lot of. Executives under Frizzini initially rejected charges that New World, an Amazon game that would ask players to colonize a mythical land and murder inhabitants who bear a striking resemblance to Native Americans, was racist. They relented after Amazon hired a tribal consultant who found that the portrayal was indeed offensive, say two people who worked on the project. The game previously planned for release last year is now scheduled for this spring. So this story is based on interviews with more than 30 current and former Amazon employees, most of whom spoke under the condition of anonymity, citing fears of litigation or career repercussions. A spokeswoman for Amazon declined to comment or make Frizzini available for an interview. Who would have guessed? Uh, this is really obvious, by the way, and this is one thing that I see a lot in my work. When somebody comes to me from i know i'm obviously not at this level and most people don't give a fuck about mmos like i do but when like an employee of a company or a previous employee of a company comes to me and tells me things uh, one of the main things people always say is oh why don't you tell us we don't believe you unless you tell us who it was there's a reason people don't want to put their name to something like this if you want to continue working in an industry 
pissing off people in the industry and, and millionaires and people who have investors and things of that nature. It's just not good. Why would you want to do it? It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. You can give people info, but you probably don't want your life ultimately ruined or potentially ruined. Uh, so Amazon is spending nearly $500 million a year operating the video game division. Two people familiar with the budget say. That amount doesn't include Twitch or a new project under different management, which is building a service to stream games to a computer, phone, or Amazon Fire TV. So de to develop games, Amazon tried to bend a creative and collaborative process to its will. And the results offer lessons to a Apple Incorporated, I'm not going to keep saying Incorporated, uh, Facebook and Google, whose efforts so far have been similarly ineffective. Successful video games are a combination of art, entertainment, technology, and very large budgets. Big tech companies only really figured out the last two. Yep. So many of the game developers who joined Amazon found themselves repelled by the corporate culture. The company is driven by data. We know this from New World. And employees are expected to write six-page documents to get major decisions approved. That's mental. In game development, on the other hand, a phrase often uttered around the office is finding the fun. It refers to altering and polishing small aspects of a game to figure out what makes the experience enjoyable. The results are measured only in emotion, which is why many developers say it's critical for the people in charge to have experience making games. Yeah, and obviously playing games as well. That would be a big thing. A lot of... Obviously you can't know how to make a game just by playing a lot of games, but you have a better idea about it than somebody who has no experience at either of them, right? And this literally goes to what they did with New World. They made a game which was for a target audience, realized the target audience was too small, and then just totally scrapped the game and went totally 180 with it, which is fine. That It's their prerogative, it's their IP, it's their money. But at the same time, you'd have thought if they understood games, they'd have known that that was the case beforehand. I'm not like a high paid executive or something. But if Amazon came to me and said, We're got, we want to make games that lots of people are going to enjoy. Should we make a full loot sandbox PvP MMORPG? And I went, are you out your fucking mind? Hardly anybody plays those, like just factually, it's a niche within a niche and it's a hardcore one at that. So it doesn't make a lot of sense to do and you would understand that at the very basic levels if you actually ever played or made games. It's pretty simple. And I'm sure somebody told him that. They probably got fired in the layoffs in summer of 2019. Uh, at Amazon's core is a set of 14 leadership principles. They include customer obsession and frugality. For a company man like Fr Frizzini, they offer a scale by which every member of the team is measured. If you don't come in line with that approach, you'll struggle at Amazon, says J Jason Sh Child, who spent more than a decade in Amazon's finance department. Adapting to the corporate culture counts for mu much more than expertise, he says. If someone is a guru in video games and they go to Amazon, would they be successful? Probably not. So I'm not going to call him a guru, but who do we know that works at Amazon Game Studios? Smedley, John Smedley. Now, he's been working there for, I, don't quote me on this, I think it's four or five years. His studio has never put a game out. They've never made a game. He doesn't work on New World, as far as I can tell from the location that's on LinkedIn uh, versus the location of where New World is made. And his game, he teased recently that it's, would people be interested in like a sci-fi shooter MMO on Twitter about six months ago? And... That's what we know about his game. He's been there for five years. It, we don't even know what it's called. Like, what has he been doing there? And again, he's not a guru, but he's made MMOs as a career. He's been making them forever. So regardless of whether we like him or not, or whether he made X or Y game bad, or ruined it, etc. He obviously has more experience than this guy, who's never made a game, who probably doesn't play games. So Jeff Bezos is more of a book guy, but the directive to go into video games came straight from the top. The Amazon chief executive officer indicated he was willing to spend exorbitant sums of money and offer development teams as long as they needed, say three people who work directly with Bezos. Not if you work on Crucible though, not if you work on uh, Breakaway or whatever it was called. They didn't really get unlimited time, just shut those games real quick. All that mattered was that they make the most ambitious games possible, ones that would draw gamers into Amazon Prime's ecosystem and showcase the technical cap capabilities of its cloud division, allowing 10,000 people to work in a single game session. It was given to the new team as a lofty target. Two projects under this directive became known around the office as the Bezos games. So I was wrong when I said Jeff Bezos doesn't even know he has a game department. I thought this would be way below him. But if this is came down from Bezos himself and he said, Come on, guys, make me two, make me some amazing games that brings tons of people into our into our ecosystem of Amazon Prime. How badly have they fucked this up? 
like really, really badly. And so Bezos views games as yet another way to sell subscriptions to Prime and hook customers on its other offerings, including television shows and movies. As other e-commerce companies catch up with speedy free shipping, Amazon has sought to add more perks to Prime to justify the price of membership. Frazzini helped kick off the games initiative in 2012 and soon became boss. He had risen from the books department to run the section of Amazon store that sells video games shipped by mail. At first, the new group planned to make games for the Amazon App Store and release them on Android phones, including the ill-fated Amazon Fire Phone, RIP, as well as the Fire TV. By 2014, the company decided to move into games for PC and eventually consoles. It was a dramatic change. Mobile games can be made by small teams in just a few months, whereas bigger ones take hundreds of people toiling away for years. Definitely in some circumstances, yeah. Uh, Frazzini set up a new game development operations at S Amazon's headquarters in Seattle. They would later call it Relentless Studios. I think this is the one that was the absolute failure of um, Crucible. Was that the one Relentless did? So to help run it, Frazzini tapped Lewis Castle, who founded the influential game company behind the Command & Conquer series. Amazon hired celebrated developers like Kim Swift, designer of the puzzle game Portal, and Clint Hocking, director of the shooter game Far Cry 2. It also formed two more studios in California. The splashy highs kept coming, including Madden Guru, Madden Guru Richard Hillerman, and online gaming pioneer John Smedley. There we go. Today, only Smedley remains. All declined to comment. I mean, if that doesn't tell you something... I mean, they're not going to put their name to it anyway. Of course they're not. Why would you piss off Amazon? That doesn't sound like a good idea. Uh, but Smedley's still there. Don't know what the fuck he's been toiling away on for the last four or five years. Uh, at first, new recruits thought they were entering some sort of fantasy land. Many were paid double the market rate of other game makers in the area, on top of lucrative packages of Amazon stock that just kept rising in value. Teams had deadlines, but they proved to be flexible, and overtime requests were infrequent, more than a dozen former employees say. One aspect of working at Amazon felt similar to traditional game companies. The studios cultivated a bro culture, in which women often weren't given the same opportunities as men, Former employees say, who'd have guessed. Uh, four female game developers say their worst experiences of sexism in the industry were at Amazon. I, I mean, workers' rights, you don't really... Obviously, I'm not downplaying sexism in Amazon. And I know there's a lot of these, like, bro frater fraternity companies that exist. Riot was really bad for it. And you can see they're still in the midst of getting sued for their rampant sexism. Um, but at Amazon... You might get treated badly if you're a woman. You also get treated badly if you're just a human being in general. So I imagine it's doubly worse for women if that's how they treat men as well. Because Amazon's constantly embroiled in scandals with their, their treatment of their workers. So this doesn't surprise me whatsoever. It doesn't surprise me that there'd be sexism in a company that has a history of treating everybody like shit. So, yeah, unsurprising. They shared stories of being ignored and undermined by male executives and say they were eventually driven out of the company. One former employee says male colleagues completely ignored her comments in meetings. Another says a member of senior leadership impeded her career growth after she disagreed with him and that he created new management positions above her and filled them with men. So, this this is not at all surprising. It, it's actually... A lot of these companies sound so similar. This is literally like, it's like I'm reading the old Riot Games stories. It's completely the same thing. So other employees registered less consequential complaints about all the the company jargons thrown around the office. Frizzini regularly expounded on the Amazon leadership, leadership principles. One of those was hire and develop the best, which was flattering to employees, but didn't tell the full story. The philosophy Amazon takes is... Hiring expertise is secondary to having leaders who follow the Amazon principles, says Child, the former employee. Amazon does hire experts from various industries, but then they expect those folks to adapt the Amazon way. This isn't how creativity works, generally. So the game studios even established their own separate set of principles, although the credos frequently changed and sometimes were in tension with one another, one another says four people who work there. Each game... Each game world should accommodate as many players as possible, yet also be fun to play solo at the same time. They had to be huge financial successes on a Call of Duty scale, but also innovative and unlike anything the world had seen before. To experienced game developers, these rules seem like a surefire way to not release anything. Who'd have guessed? Who'd have guessed? That the people telling them what to do... I've said this for, for over a year now. 
the people above the people making New World do not let them make a game that makes sense to people who know how to make a game. We've seen it forever. We've seen the systems that don't work together. We've seen how slow they are, how, uh, how, how they don't want to adopt things that are super obvious to even layman's. It's really, really obvious. And the fact that they're saying, you know, they've got to be innovative like no one's ever seen before, but huge financial successes. Who can do that? There's companies that have made games for 20 years that still follow the same principles. They follow the same framework because they know it's easy and it works and it makes money. You can't really do both. Obviously, some some people can and they're like the revolutionary games. But a lot of them don't come from corporate. They don't come from like EA. They don't come from Ubisoft. They don't come from Activision Blizzard. They come from indie companies or smaller companies and they go huge. Think of PUBG when that came out and was the big BR revolution. And then obviously Fortnite came out after that. Stuff of that nature. They take over. They're not usually like... Usually corporate companies make games that are... This game that's popular but with our spin on it, more casual and more polished, more money spent on it, more content. That's typically what they do. They don't make revolutionary games, uh, at least in my experience, in my opinion. There will be, of course, e examples that prove the rule that they have done that, but there's got not going to be that many. And we also see, by the way, another side tangent, when too much money and too much oversight gets involved in companies, they fucking murder those companies. A prime example would be Activision Blizzard. Blizzard made great games. They made revolutionary games for many years. And then the corporate erosion that happened for years and years and years post Activision takeover. At this point, you, you have a certain level of expectation for Blizzard games, but it's, it's expectation to be polished. It's expectation to be serviceable. They're not going to be revolutionary. They're not going to be crazy. Uh, there's not going to be that much labored love put into them. As you can tell, it's just what happens with companies like this. The company's too big now. When they get to a certain stage, the bottom line, the corporate identity takes over and it, it does hinder the creativity. It just, it just does. Um, you can definitely disagree with my take on that, but I, I'm pretty adamant that I've seen enough of it so far to say that's how it is. So Amazon didn't give employees much financial incentive to release anything either. Most big game companies pay staff bonuses based in part on the critical and commercial responses to their games. But Amazon's stock plan only re rewarded employees for time spent at the company. Uh, that led some to prioritize job preservation over anything else, say three former employees. They say they watch colleagues avoid arguments and only seek to placate bosses like Frizzini, even when they disagreed. This was in defiance of the Amazon principle, have backbone, disagree and commit. Who'd have guessed? In incentivize people to not have a backbone and you will be surprised that nobody has a backbone. Frazzini's lack of experience in video games showed during project review sessions. A standard industry ritual where the boss plays early prototypes and offers feedback. His comments were of the focus group variety, recalls a former Amazon de developer. Why is it this colour? And seems fun, when will it be ready? On a different occasion, says another developer, the team cringed as Frizzini struggled to differentiate between hyper-polished conceptual footage and live gameplay, a sign he didn't understand the technology. This is fucking tra- this is tragic. Some meetings got sidetracked when Frizzini, armed with the latest Venture Beat article about whatever game was making the most money that month, demanded they chase a new trend. Four developers say, the team wound up designing lesser versions of popular games, a desperate strategy laid out in a recent Wired article. Right Games League of Legends inspired an Amazon project called Nova that was canned in 2017. I didn't even hear about this one. Epic Games Fortnite led to another Amazon game, Intensity, cancelled in 2019. How many games have these motherfuckers cancelled that I didn't even know existed? Activision Blizzard's Overwatch begot Amazon's Crucible, which would suffer a similar fate. Amazon's most successful gaming property isn't actually a game. Twitch draws some 26 million people a day, and they're trying to kill this, by the way, and doing a real good job recently. Uh, 26 million people a day to watch a live video of other people playing video games. Frazzini helped secure the acquisition in August 2014 for 970 million, which would later prove to be a bargain. Uh, various attempts by Facebook, Google, and Microsoft to build their own live streaming network for games have failed. Soon after the Twitch deal, Bezos de devised a plan to closely pair Amazon Game Studios with the video site, says two people who met with the CEO. We knew about this. You remember back to when New World was originally uh, talked about and they said it would be a game that was in it, it was integrated with Twitch and that you could play 
uh, as a Twitch streamer and you'd have like things in the game that your audience had impact over and stuff of that nature. I forgot the exact wording they used, but it was like a big deal. I'd, I've not seen anything about that since the game's been changed. Twitch would serve as a free marketing, marketing vehicle, for, uh, vehicle for Amazon games and the games in turn would offer Twitch viewers features they couldn't get anywhere else. So I made a video a while back talking about the numbers of, of people people that have watched ads for new world so what i was looking at was looking at a normal game that has normal metrics they'd have a certain amount of comments a certain amount of likes a certain amount of dislikes for the amount of views that they have proportionally new world has one of the most views for a video game trailer of the last like nine years and hardly anybody knows about the game why because when they were pushing the original launch of new world they put a trailer out and they must have put they must have put millions and millions and millions of ads of new world on twitch just spamming people with new world ads there's still not that much hype for the game and they they have this huge probably the biggest marketing platform for getting a game to make money ever been created nothing makes money like so, a game getting popular on twitch how many people uh, the demographic of people who would buy a game and that are on twitch it's huge it's massive it really is and i think it's disingenuous to show somebody a trailer and they look and go wow this has got more views than the cyberpunk trailer and that's been out for seven years longer it, this must be the most popular game ever it must be the most hyped game ever but then you realize probably over 90 percent of those views are from ads that people are watching on twitch while they're afk or or tugging it so the team the two teams held day-long brainstorming sessions but the summits didn't amount to much according to people who attended one concept they did pursue together was a series of celebrity events to promote their games and sell subscriptions to Amazon Prime. They held one in New Jersey featuring The Clerks filmmaker Kevin Smith, legend. Attempts to land other stars, including Dwayne The Rock Johnson, for a second event in Las Vegas were unsuccessful. They invited Smith back and, they, and then shelved the series. Oh no, who'd have guessed? The Twitch chief, Emmett Shear, was reluctant to assign his employees to projects for the game studios. Two people who worked with him say, one proposal pushed by Frizzini in 2017 asked Twitch to help build a digital game store, the former employees say. The idea would allow Amazon to avoid paying a 30% sales commission to Steam, the most popular storefront for PC games. Twitch employees weren't thrilled because Amazon didn't have any big games with which to attract shoppers. Frizzini's employees assigned to collaborate on the project protested because bypassing Steam would shrink their market, four former employees say. Withholding a game from Steam, they argued, is the equivalent of refusing to sell a book on Amazon. When the project was due for more staffing resources, Shea resisted and it was left to languish inside Amazon Game Studios. We can see a correlation between Amazon Game Studios here and all of these big companies. We can see, we can see it. Projects that they're super hyped for, that they get, they, they try to sell people who know better on the project, get them involved in it, and then just let it die just waste a fucking shitload of money just doing nothing and people who knew at the beginning were like we why are we doing that it doesn't make sense I, anybody could tell you how are you going to get a storefront to work to compete with steam without your own games epic does this by the way they one have their own games and they two pay for massive amounts of exclusivity um if you're going to make a storefront you're going to be competing with with uh, Epic for exclusivity, and Epic also make their own games, so people have a reason to already inherently be on their platform, and they're already in it. So you're coming in third to the party, trying to take over from Steam and subsequently also Epic Games. You've got to be you, you've got to be smoking crack rock to be to be that delusional that you think you can just come into a market and just say we're Amazon, fuck it, we can do it. It's it's madness. It's pure hubris. It really is. So Frizzini was more fixated on another project anyway. Amazon's designers and programmers needed a game engine, a collection of tools used to build games. For most studios, there are really only two options. Epic's Unreal Engine is Coke, and Unity Software is Pepsi. Pretty good, pretty good analogy, really. Amazon, in effect, decided to make an RC Cola. I fucking love this guy's writing, I really do. In 2014, it licensed technology from the German company Crytek for a homemade engine called Lumberyard. So well, it was the cry engine. Uh, so Frazzini then assigned a team of engineers to build the engine and released it to the public in 2016 for free. 
The tools are intertwined with Amazon Web Services, setting up Lumberyard as a way to draw a new class of software developers to the business. Frazzini, who reports to Web Services Chief Andy Jazzy, also mandated that all Amazon games be built with Lumberyard rather than pay for Unreal or Unity. Again, hubris, but at the same time, you've got enough money, you've probably got enough experts to build one of these. Over the years, how many companies have you seen a game make be made in Lumberyard since 2016 that got released? How many how many games have you opened up that were successful? I can't name one, a singular one that I've opened and gone, oh, it's made, by, made in Lumberyard, cool. Not seen one. Somebody can fill me on that one, but... I've not seen one myself. Lumberyard became a bogeyman around the office. Some features required esoteric commands to function, and the system was painfully slow. Developers played Halo or watched Amazon Prime videos while waiting for Lumberyard to process R or compile code, several former employees say. A common refrain around the office, according to a former employee, Lumberyard is killing this company. So, for a while now, I've been saying, and some people within my community have been very vocal about this as well, that New World is not a big deal for the company because they're trying to make an engine. And I've said this all along, Amazon don't care, just like Microsoft don't care, but they're not fucking stupid about games. Look, at, Listen to this, Amazon, and think about this, what Microsoft have done. Microsoft have been tempting people into their ecosystem of the Windows Store, the Game Pass, etc., Microsoft has Xbox as a console and PC as 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 a platform. Now, do they care if you're on Xbox or you're on PC? No, because you're on their platform. You're in their ecosystem. That's why they were smart enough eventually to make Game Pass something that was on PC and have all of their exclusive games and games that are on Game Pass on PC and on Xbox because you're in their system. That's what they want. Now, Amazon, they... They've been trying to do the same thing. They want you on Prime. So they got Prime. They made Prime really good on delivery. They made Prime good for uh, the the movies and TV shows that they have, but the interface and everything for Prime Video is fucking embarrassingly shit. Compare Prime Video, by the way, from w one of the companies in the world that is the richest and should have a lot of experience to Netflix. Netflix is head and shoulders above it in every conceivable way, in my opinion. Uh, so also then they've got Twitch. Integrate Prime into Twitch actually did a really good job with that really interesting and uh fun way to do it benefits everybody involved makes you want to have amazon prime even if you don't use amazon in general because it's like a couple quid extra and you get all the video etc and you and your twitch sub that you'd pay five pounds for anyway makes sense but then when they're doing it with their gaming division and trying to get everything on their own uh their own platform being an engine and their platform of amazon prime why didn't they just have the intelligence to just say, we want them on Prime, we don't care who, which engine they're on, we don't care which storefront they're on, we want them on Prime. And then you can scale up from there when you've got experience and studios that can make games and people who understand how these things all work together and how the culture of people who play and buy games and watch games and stream games actually think. It's just, it's mental because we all saw Microsoft languish a little bit um, a few years ago before they actually started making good uh, progressive changes where they were doing things that didn't make a lot of sense and microsoft were obviously clearly in the console market losing to sony there wasn't that much they could do about that so what did they do they did the thing that they should have always done they just brought in pc with their console and said yeah we're we're, we're hip now we're cool we don't care about exclusives we don't care you know it's on pc if you want to be on pc it makes a lot of sense it's just it works it really works so Lumbyard's killing this company is one of the best quotes ever. It makes complete sense. I've been saying it for a long time. Uh, they don't care. They they really don't care about New World as a game. So from the outside, though, Amazon's game operation was scaring com competitors. It had some of the world's brightest minds, a deep budget, and the most sophisticated internet infrastructure on Earth. It was building a proprietary engine, and at TwitchCon in 2016, Amazon said it was working on three new games, Breakaway, cancelled, Crucible, cancelled, and New World yet to be cancelled probably won't be to be honest nova the league of legends copycat was still under lock and key over the coming years all but one would be cancelled in the summer of 2018 frazzini nabbed his biggest hire yet christoph christoph hartman the new vice president of game studios at amazon had spent two decades at take two interactive software where he published blockbusters such as bioshock and mafia it was a somewhat controversial hire as hartman was also responsible for some high profile failures 
such as the Bureau XCOM Declassified, which led to the developer's demise. Still, Frazzini positioned Hartman as a fixer to staff. Wait, Hartman loosened the mandate to make everything with Lumberyard, oh, so you can use other engines if you want, and some teams began prototyping games using Unreal Engine. Wow, it's almost as if when you put someone in charge who knows what to do, they actually make good decisions. Fucking wild that they had to wait four years. No, sorry, six years to hire this dude before he went, why are we only using our shit engine, by the way? Why don't we use the engines that actually work? Because that will save us money because we don't have to make an engine and we clearly can't. So Hartman also pressed Amazon to publish titles made by other companies. So he's the one who got us Smilegate. He it signed one such deal with the Korean publisher, Smilegate, to release a game in 2021. That is... 99.9% going to be Lost Ark in the West in 2021. It would w make way more sense anyway as Amazon to just develop the games on their own on the side. But publishing games, you, you're a huge company with a massive infrastructure, a massive name, a trusted brand, makes way more sense. Uh, so soon after Hartman's appointment, uh, Amazon came close to kept capturing a much brighter star in the media world. The company informed staff in 2018 that Jason Keelar a former Amazonian and one-time Hulu CEO was rejoining to oversee the Amazon Games division and presumably become Frazzini's boss, says two people who were there at the time. For unexplained reasons, Keylar never arrived. The almost hiring was first reported by a technology news site, The Information. In April 2020, he joined Warner Media as CEO. When Fr with Frazzini still at the helm, the game studios began aligning themselves with Amazon's far more successful film and television properties. The company said in 2019 that it was working with Chinese developer Leiu Technology Holdings on an online game based on Lord of the Rings as a complement to the upcoming Prime video series. That same year, Amazon released its first ever console game, a racing simulation based on the Prime video show The Grand Tour, Top Gear, a car review series starring the original British stars of Top Gear. The game bombed. It drew so few players that Amazon took the unusual step of removing it from storefronts a year later. They can't fucking win. The embarrassments kept coming. In May 2020, Amazon released Crucible, the hero shooter inspired by Overwatch. One of the things that we hear most often from people who try Crucible is that it feels unique, Frazzini said in an interview at the time. These people are so full of shit. They're so full of shit. They're, they're so high on their own supply. It is literally like that uh, South Park episode where they're just fucking farting in wine glasses. Ooh, ooh, my, the aroma. Oh, I work for Amazon. Our game, oh, they're so unique. Fuck off. Gamers weren't interested. R reviewers IGN called it tedious, and PC Gamer declared Amazon's long-awaited hero shooter wasn't worth the wait. Wasn't worth the wait. If you're getting ripped by mainstream game journalism, you know you fucking lost. Uh, also, by the way, New World also got these articles. PC Gamer, IGN, they were calling it boring, slow, tedious, uh, nothing new. So you know, there you go. I obviously got a bunch of blowback for saying that the game was boring and lacked content and wasn't finished but most people that are in the know knew exactly what i was talking about so former employees of the live streaming unit say twitch was often reluctant to alter a game's fate through promotion after all twitch can't save a game nobody wants to play amazon pulled crucible from wild release in june and then killed it in october i just i'm just going to say we're, we're not that close to the end we're almost there if you have the marketing machine of twitch and you still can't get a game to do well on release just fucking give up. Just give up. If you, you're paying all the top streamers, like Tim the Tapman was playing it, there was a bunch of streams I watched, I think Summit was playing it, that were playing Crucible. As soon as their uh, sponsored stream w time was over, nobody played that fucking bullshit game again. Amazon shifted many of the Crucible developers to work on New World. The project was originally pitched as a survival game in which people would play as colonists in a fictional version of 1600s America, fighting enemies that looked a lot like the indigenous people. The original code name for the game was... Roanoke, uh, named after Sir Walter Raleigh's failed settlements in the 16th century. Didn't even know that. When developers at Amazon pointed out to Frazzini's deputy, Patrick Gilmore, we know about Patrick Gilmore, he got fired or he left in the summer of 2019 when they did the restructuring of Amazon Game Studios and they changed New World from being a uh, sandbox pvp mmo to be in whatever the fuck it was and then later on we learned it's a theme park holy trinity mmo pretty soon um patrick gilmore was mysteriously gone from the company i don't know if he got fired i don't know if he left 
um, that the setting and villains could be considered racist. He expressed disbelief, according to two people who worked there. Gilmore didn't respond to a request for comment. The disagreement, former employees say, fit a pattern of executives neglecting advice from staff. Uh, developers eventually removed the Native American imagery from New World. The game was set for release this past August, but after Crucible's scathing reception, Amazon pushed the debut back to this year. Still, several Amazon employees are optimistic about the title. It has received positive buzz from streamers, and it's the kind of ambitious project Bezos is known to support, employees say. Frazzini is fond of saying anything can be measured, according to two people who work close closely with him. This philosophy, common in Silicon Valley, is anathema to game industry veterans. Nobody who's successful starts with metrics, says Seamus Blackley, who helped design the original Xbox. The Microsoft Game Console was the last winning incursion into the video game market in the past two decades. Despite expensive attempts, including Apple Arcade, Facebook Oculus, and Google Stadia. Stadia, Stadia, whatever. Fairly or not, Frazzini gets a lot of blame for Amazon Gaming's failures at a time when overall spending on video games during the coronavirus pandemic is up significantly. After the cancellation of Crucible, an outgoing employee entered the Seattle office to collect personal belongings and found a crass message in big blue letters scrawled on a whiteboard, Fraz is cancer. Orbiting the note was a handful of plus ones written in assorted colours. Can you imagine? Can you imagine being the corporate overlord of a bunch of creatives that you won't listen to and you come into work one day and there's been like a fucking mutinous... This shit on a boat in the 1600s would have got you fucking would have got you hung you'd have been you'd have been jumping off the plank like this is this is mutiny basically if nobody if you don't have the respect of all your underlings when you're running a company like that nobody's gonna give a fuck let's be honest if this is actually what's happening that's that's mental it really is so the biggest new product from amazon has nothing to do with frizzini Amazon Luna lets subscribers instantly play console-grade games without the need to buy pricey hardware or wait hours to download a large file. The team released a version for Android devices in December, and the service remains in early access limited to customers who request an invitation. The Luna project is overseen by David Lim, Limp, who runs the devices division that produces the Echo and Kindle. In its current iteration, Luna offers more than two dozen games, none of which are made by Amazon Game Studios. Quote, I hope that they have a hit... Limp said in an interview in September, but in addition, I think it's equally important for us to build a system, and I think Luna has the starting points for that. In many ways, the approach to games mirror the one that eventually led to Amazon, led Amazon to some success in Hollywood. It tried a bunch of different things, develop a streaming service, set up a studio, produce TVs and film, build a set-top box, and selected an Amazon insider, Roy Price, to run it. Price produced a handful of bad shows before Transparent won Amazon its first Golden Globe in 2015, then came Oscars for Manchester, Manchester by the Sea, and more Golden Globes for The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Price was ousted in 2017 over sexual harassment allegations. Crazy. And Bezos took the unlikely step of looking outside of the company to Hollywood for his replacement, uh, Jennifer Salke. Salk, maybe. She cemented Amazon Prime Video as an important part of the company's business strategy. People sign up to Prime to watch The Boys, and they buy more stuff on Amazon. I mean, undoubtedly, Amazon Prime's got better with the amount of TV shows that they have and the quality of the TV shows that they have over the years. I still don't think it's it literally holds a candle to Netflix, but it's, it's much better than it was, put it that way. Prime Video was so fucking bad, like, five, six years ago. Amazon could still do the same in gaming. Luna demonstrates a continued commitment as do the investments in New World and as yet unannounced projects, including a secretive new game from Smedley, who laid the foundation for massively multiplayer online games in the late 1990s with EverQuest. After Amazon's misadventures in gaming, there's at least one passage from the leadership principles the company will still hope to prove. Leaders are right a lot. With assistance by Matt Day, and on top of that, this was an article that was by Jason Schreier and also Priya Anand. Anand? I'm probably butchering the name, sorry about that. Uh, not familiar with the work of this person so this is a long ass video it's it's probably like going to be 50 odd minutes long i really hope uh you guys enjoyed the video my take was probably a little bit scattered on it but honestly this article was was mega interesting for me as somebody who's followed amazon game studios super closely over the years and has uh, talked about this subject a lot i've talked about new world probably more than any other game other than black desert online which i made videos of when i first started my channel and i've always gotten shit for criticizing new world and criticizing amazon game studios but this just proves 
what I was saying was right. I might not have been uh, correct on all the tiny little details, but the principle of Amazon Game Studios doesn't know how to make games. I was fucking, I was right. And if anyone who said that I'm a hater, well, I guess you'll say this is hating as well. And this, this article is hating, but you know, it just goes to show Amazon Game Studios has no fucking idea what they're doing generally. Hopefully New World's good. Like I say, I'm more optimistic about it now, but it does seem like they're they've left it a little bit late in the game to get it to where it needs to be. It's it's been a problem for a while. I just hope the tech, the underlying underlying tech, works good enough. And yeah, fuck that article was really good. So thank you very much for watching. Stay safe out there. We out. Peace.